Hey, what's up guys? John from SNS Cycle here. We're back for our second part on how to install the winter power package. We still have the dyna on the lift and we've completed the install of the four inch cylinder kit. We're moving on to the cam chest kit, which will be featuring the SNS cam plate, oil pump, 585 cams, push rods, and chain tensioners. We're gonna go ahead and break down the motorcycle right now per the factory manual. We finished teardown, and before installing the cam chest kit, we prepped the bike. We went ahead and replaced the inner cam chest bearings. They were going bad, and the ones that were supplied within the SNS kit, we replaced them per the factory manual. Now we're ready to move on to our oil pump. Let's get started. When installing the oil pump, it comes from the factory like so, with a zip tie on it, holding everything into place. We're gonna go ahead and remove the zip tie and take the pump apart. When putting it into the motorcycle, you want to make sure we do it a piece at a time. So you want to make sure that you lay all the pieces the way they come out, keeping them in order. And we will start with the inner housing onto the bike. The first step in the process of installing the new oil pump is the O-ring. We're gonna add some lubricant to the O-ring. The O-ring is supplied within the kit, some assembly lube to the O-ring and place it within the case, making sure it seats all the way. You do not want to put the O-ring on the housing and then place the housing onto the motorcycle. This may bind the O-ring or not seat the O-ring at all. Once you have done that, you're going to take your, your inner housing, apply some assembly lube to where the O-ring will sit. pushing on in. Now that we have the housing secured, we're going to go ahead and install G-Rotor number one. We're going to apply some assembly lube throughout the rotor itself and on the outside of it. Okay, there's a relief cut within the G-rotor that's shown right here. We're going to put the relief cut in towards the engine. Before we put our divider plate on, we're going to go ahead and put the dowel pins back into the inner housing. We're going to take some assembly lube and add it to the divider plate before putting it on. For our second G-Rotor, we're going to go ahead and add a simply lube to it all the way around. And then we're going to place it onto the outer. Like so. And then we'll place this within, matching up the dowel pins. May need to finesse to get the flat spots.
and we're ready to put on our last G-rotor. Now we're ready for the last G-rotor, the outer G-rotor. We're going to go ahead and add an assembly lube to this one and place it into the pump. After installing the oil pump, you want to go ahead and take a straight edge, line it up to the face of the oil pump and the face of the cam chest area, the gasket surface, and making sure the face of the oil pump doesn't protrude. As you can see here, we have plenty of clearance and we are good to move forward. Now, if the oil pump does protrude fat past the gasket area, you want to check the scavenging hole back here where you place the o-ring in and making sure that it's seated all the way after doing that go back over and make sure you have clearance now we're ready to move on to the cams the first step that we're going to do with the cams is going to install them to the cam plate the secondary chain we're going to go ahead and take our cams and put the secondary chain on the cams now and lay the cam plate on the cams. One thing you want to do, and to make sure you line up the dots that are faced on the cams themselves, making sure they are facing each other, as you can see right here. This is the timing marks. They need to be facing each other to make sure it's timed correctly. Now that we have the secondary chain on, we're going to go ahead and take our cam plate and apply some assembly lube in the housing here. And slip on the cam plate, making sure we keep the timing marks in the same spot. Once you have done that, you're going to go ahead and flip her over. And we're going to go ahead and add the chain tensioner. We're now ready to install the secondary chain tensioner on the back of the cam plate. It's going to go located right here. And you're going to compress it down. And then you will install the bolts supplied within the kit. The bolts that we're using for the back are an inch and one eighth, and they are a Torx bolt. Before installing them, we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of blued Loctite on each bolt. And now we will hand tight them in. Now that we have them hand tight, we're going to go ahead and tighten them up. Just to a snug point, and then we will torque them down to 100 inch pounds. Now that we've torqued down the chain tensioner, the secondary chain tensioner, we're going to go ahead and flip the cam plate back over and using the stock washer that came off the cam, we're going to put the C-clip back on using a C-clip tool.
Before installing the cams and the cam plate, we want to go ahead and set up the motor with new O-rings. So we're going to remove the old O-rings. And supplied in the kit are two new O-rings. We'll add some assembly lube. and place them into the engine case themselves. And while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and add some assembly lube to our inner cam bearings. Making sure you get it all the way around. This will help for installation. We're now ready to put the cam and cam plate in. We're gonna go ahead and add some assembly lube to the cams where they will be going inside the cam bearing. Using the factory bolts that came off, we're gonna go ahead and tighten the cam plate back up, hand tight. The sequence you use is actually forged into the cam plate or you can refer to the factory manual. Make sure to add blue Loctite to each bolt. Now that we've gotten them all hand tight, we're gonna go back over in the same sequence that are forged into the plate itself, torquing them down at 100 inch pounds. Using the supplied oil pump bolts within the SNS kit, we've applied some blue Loctite to them, and the number sequence for the oil pump bolts are forged into the plate, and you can also use the factory manual. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and hand tighten all the bolts per the sequence, then tighten up one and two, rotating the motor over in higher gear. We removed the spark plugs from the motor and we've put it in high gear. We're gonna rotate the motor and alternate between one and two and tighten them up hand tight. What this will do is help center the oil pump in the back. Now that we have one and two tightened, we're gonna go ahead and tighten down to a snug point, three and four. After that, we will torque each bolt down to 100 inch pounds of torque in the sequence shown. One, two, three, four. And this is also forged within the plate. And just to double check, we're gonna go back over one more time at 100 inch foot pounds of torque, making sure everything is torqued. 
correctly. This would be an also a good opportunity to go around the outside of the cam plate and make sure everything is still torqued at 100 inch pounds. Now we're gonna go ahead and check our sprocket alignment between the cam sprocket and the crankshaft sprocket. We're gonna go ahead and take our factory cam sprocket spacer and put it back on and put the cam sprocket on. We're gonna go ahead and hand tight it just to hold it in place. We will snug it up after we get the crank sprocket on. And we're going to put the crank sprocket on. We're going to insert our teeth holder in between the sprockets and hand tighten both bolts down. Using our straight edge and the filler gauge, we're going to go ahead and take our straight edge and we're going to lay it over the crankshaft sprocket right on the face here. So then it runs over the camshaft sprocket. We're going to measure the distance in between the straight edge and the sprocket. And this distance should be no more than 10 thousandths of an inch. It can be under, but you want to make sure it doesn't go too far under. And as you can see here, the space in between is significant enough where we're going to need to go ahead and change out the spacer in the back of the cam sprocket. The cam sprocket spacer part numbers are also available in the instruction sheet for your replacement parts. And we will go ahead and update that now. We've updated our spacer behind the camshaft sprocket and we're going to go ahead and check the clearance in between the straight edge and face of the sprocket. And we are now underneath 10 thousandths of an inch. We're ready to go ahead and add on the chain. We went ahead and added our chain to our cam sprocket and our crank sprocket and we made sure the two dots are facing each other for timing. You wanna make sure that your engine is timed and we're going to slide them on and they're still on and the dots are still lined up. We're gonna go ahead and put our bolts back in and lock this into place. We're gonna go ahead and add some red Loctite to each bolt and hand tighten them in. Now using the ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and hand tighten them in until they're snug. We're gonna insert our teeth holder so the gears do not rotate. Now that they're hand tight with the ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and torque down each bolt. The crankshaft sprocket bolt is gonna be 25 foot-pounds of torque. And we're gonna go ahead and torque down our cam sprocket bolt at 35 foot-pounds of torque. Now we're going to go ahead and 
add in our chain tensioner to the front of the cam plate. With the supplied Torx bolts that come in the kit, we're gonna add a little bit of blue Loctite to each one. Slide in the tensioner. Push up from the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and tighten these down by hand, just snugging them up, not aggressive tight. And we're gonna to torque them down to 100 inch pounds of torque. Now, if you are running a gear drive setup, this will have a blocker plate in this position, which would come in the kit. And we're gonna go ahead and torque them down to 100 inch pounds. Now we're ready to go ahead and put the cam cover back on. Supplied in the kit, the SNS kit will be a new cam cover gasket. I'm gonna go ahead and lay that on like so. And take our cam cover, place it on. Start with number one bolt up here. Hand tighten her in and move to number two bolt and hand tighten it in. Number three, number four, number five, number six. Number eight, number nine, the bolt order sequence is also within the SNS instruction sheet. Now that we've gotten all the bolts hand tight, we're going to go ahead and go back through using the pattern that we reference within the SNS instruction sheet at 100 inch pounds of torque. And we're gonna go back through one more time and double check the torque at 100 inch pounds, uh, same bolt pattern. Now we're ready to install our precision tappets, tappet blocks, push rods, and push rod tubes. As you will notice, we went ahead and soaked our tappets in motor oil for 24 hours. This helps get all the air bubbles out and they will compress completely and correct. Now we're gonna go ahead and put together our push rod tubes. When putting together your push rod tubes, you will need some of your factory parts off your stock push rod tubes. The cover cap, the cover cap spring, and the cover cap washer. To assemble, take the cover cap Place it over the top tube, take the cover cap spring, place it over the top tube, then take the cover cap washer and place it over. Within the SNS supplied gaskets for the push rod tubes, you will take the middle gasket, which is a smaller O-ring, thinner in diameter. The thicker one will be used for the top of the head and the bigger O-ring will be used for the push rod blocks. Slide the O-ring over gently and insert the bottom of the push rod tube. Now we're ready to put the tappets in the motor. When installing the tappets within the engine, we're gonna go ahead and remove the anti-rotation pin out of the way 
And on the actual tappet, you will notice that there's two flat sides and a hole in the back right here. I want to make sure the hole faces the engine. And you slide it in, making sure you keep your flat sides parallel so you can put your anti-rotation pin back in. Put our anti-rotation pin back in, making sure everything is aligned. Perfect. And we'll repeat the process for the front. Now we're ready to install our tappet covers. Uh, supplied in the kit is our new gaskets. One thing to note is you will see the ribs here, which you do want those to fall over the anti-rotation pin. Because on the actual block itself, you will see ribs here. This will hold in the anti-rotation pin when torquing it down. We're going to hand type these and then torque them down to 100 inch pounds of torque. Now that we've hand tightened these, we're gonna go ahead and torque these down to 100 inch pounds of torque in a zigzag pattern. We're going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the front. Before we install our push rods, we're going to make sure that the rear cylinder is in top dead center. To do this, it's pretty easy. We're going to take our clippings from our original push rod tubes, place them in, and while the motorcycle is in high gear, we're going to rotate the motor. And when the push rods are at the lowest point, we'll know that it's in top dead center. Next, we're gonna install our O-rings. We're just adding a little light coat of oil on the O-rings themselves. These O-rings are for the tappet covers. They're the biggest ones out of the kit. Place them right in just like so. And now we're gonna install the head O-ring gaskets. Like cover of oil on them, just like before. And we will place them right up into the head themselves. Now that we've gotten all our O-rings in the head and in the tappet block, we're gonna go ahead and take our push rod and the adjuster and collapse it all the way down before putting it into push rod tube. Insert it into the push rod tube and now we're ready to install it within the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and do the intake first and we're gonna slide it up in, making sure it goes all the way up. and collapsing it down into the tap. And one thing you want to note is the lock nut that's on the bottom there. You want to hold on to it so it doesn't fall into the tap it lock or slide down. And you want to rotate it a little bit 
and get it locked into place. Now to keep the push rod up, we're going to go ahead and take a paper clip, bend at the bottom with the rubber band at the top, slide it into the bottom of the push rod too, and wrap the rubber band around the top of the engine. Now that we have it in a position where it's steady, we're going to go ahead and hand tighten it down before doing our full turns. We're going to go ahead and adjust our push rods now. As you notice, I made a mark right here on this flat. In the SNS instructions, we say to do 24 flats or three full rotations. What I'm doing now is marking one flat so then I can count the full rotations that come around. Now that we've done a full three turns or 24 flats, we're gonna go ahead and go just a little bit past. Reason being is when you tighten up the lock nut, it'll turn back just a smidge. We're gonna go ahead and lock these in and wait 15 minutes for the tapest to bleed out. Now that we've let our tappets bleed for 15 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and double check by rotating the push rods. You finger rotate the push rods, making sure that you can move them. They don't need to be too hard and they don't need to be too soft when you rotate them. If they are hard to move or hard to rotate, you need to readjust, or if they're free flowing, you need to readjust. These look to be in perfect condition, and we're gonna go ahead and add the top part of our push rod tube, the keeper. To do this, we're gonna release our paper clip rubber band and push the bottom of the push rod tube into the O-ring in the tappet block, making sure it seats correctly. Taking a flathead screwdriver and your keeper, make sure your keeper cap this slid down. Take the top of the keeper, place it into the top of the push rod tube, making sure it's set in there. And using the flathead screwdriver, slide the keeper over the cap locks it into place. We're gonna repeat, same process for the rear. It's always good to double check and make sure the top of the push rod is completely seated into the o-ring and top of the head perfect we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process for the front cylinder after completing the installation of our push rods on the front cylinder we went ahead and reassembled the bike 
Stay tuned for our next video where we're going to feature how to do heat cycles correctly and overall performance on the dyno. If you like this video, give it a like or a comment. And for more information about SNS product, follow us on our social media channels or check sscycle.com.